Hello, Mark Crossfield here. We're going to do a video today talking about angle of attack. So the angle the club attacks the ground on, so down or up or level, these kind of things. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about how I can change the angle of attack not to correspond with where the ball position is. To try and help you guys think a little bit more about how to improve your games and get a bit more of an understanding of why this game can be so tough and why sometimes simple rules of things like ball position and that don't always apply. Um, let's get stuck in. Right, so we've got GC2 uh, HMT here today. We're going to collect some head data. I'm going to show you how my club head is delivered at different angles when I think of moving the handle of the club, so this grip end, the bit I hold on to, in a different relationship in my head to how the club is coming in. Um, what I'm going to do first is hit three shots where I hit my normal angle of attack, my normal shots. So we're just going to collect three shots to start us off. Uh, so that's around the four down point. Okay, so there's three shots of my normal stock standard uh, angle of attack. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit some shots. I keep everything the same but I'm going to try and hit much heavier down on the ball. And the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to have normal ball position. I'm not going to try and throw my weight any differently. All I'm going to do is change the relationship between the handle and the head. So I'm going to handle drag, if you like. I'm going to pull the handle ahead of the head. Let me show you what it does to the numbers and how it changes the angle of attack. So let's do three that way. Okay, so there's the third angle of attack went much more down there so the club was coming more down i didn't really change anything in my ball position any of those things now i'm going to do three where i try and hit more level at the ball so not down at the ball and again i'm going to keep the ball in the middle of my stance all i'm going to do is change the relationship between the handle and the head so the delivery of the two if you imagine the two are coming into impact if they're delivered at different angles different relationships to each other uh, that's going to change angle of attack and many other things. So let me try some now where the ball's in the middle of my stance. So normal setup like I would do with my 7-iron, change the angle of attack. Okay, and there's three where I try and feel like I leave the handle back and let the head almost overtake at the bottom and my angle of attack has considerably changed. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the ball way forward in my stance to play it kind of beyond my front toe, but still try and get the angle of attack to be heavily down. I'm going to try and lean back as well as I do it. I'm not going to just throw my weight forward and chase that ball. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the ball way forward, my body back, but I'm going to try and feel that I move my handle ahead of the ball before I then deliver the club while keeping my body back. So and that's way down. And you can see I'm not particularly leaning forwards. I'm just trying to change the delivery of the face and the handle, this end to the bottom end. Again, that's way down. Okay, and now I'm gonna do three. And we're gonna look at all this data in a second. Ball back in my stance, I'm now going to put it close just inside my right foot and I'm going to try and deliver the head before the handle because I want the ball back but I want to try and hit up. All of these shots I'm trying to hit target as best as I can. One more. Okay, and there's three with the different angle of attack there. So let's present some of this data and show you what's going on here and how it might help you play some better golf. If you get a better understanding of how the handle, the grip end, is relating to the head end and sometimes how ball position, even though in theory it should change these angles, it 
doesn't for some people, it doesn't even get close to changing the angles, it's just not enough, it's too simplistic a way of looking at angle of attack and open faces and closed faces, these kind of things. So let's look at some of the data. Okay, so let's look at some of the numbers. So if we look at angle of attack to start us off, first three set of numbers are my normal shot and I'm 4.1 down with my 7 iron, which is around where I want to be, 4 down. So the club is coming 4 down as it hits the ball, 4 degrees descending into the ground, into the ball and into the ground. So low point, if you like, is ahead of the ball. The lowest point that club's going to meet is ahead of the ball. Now, if you look at the second group of shots, well, I didn't change ball position, but I tried to increase the angle of attack into a more down. What you'll notice is I became eight down. I doubled the angle of attack. Now, the way I did that is I simply set everything up the same, but I pulled my handle ahead of the hand, uh, a handle ahead of the head of the club, leaving that club in my head felt later. So to me, I almost feel like I'm hitting it this way. So as soon as I take that angle out, you can see low point's going to be way ahead of where that ball is, which is basically what happened on that shot. I got eight down. So even though I didn't change ball positions, didn't really try to change weight shifts and all these things. I just changed the relationship between the top end of the club and the bottom end of the club to change the angle of attack quite successfully. Now the second three, or the third group of three shots here, this is me trying to hit more level angle of attack uh, again without changing the ball position. What I did on this one, you can see I'm 0.9 averaging down, so pretty level, zero really. All I did on this one is I tried to feel like I pushed the handle back that way and let the club almost feel like it's overtaking at the bottom. So I got the relationship much more level, no shaft lean. To me, it felt like I was actually leaning it backwards, even though it was around level. Um, so I changed the angle of attack on those three shots without changing any of my particular fundamentals in setup. I did it in the relationship between the top end and the bottom end. Now, if we look at the next two groups of three shots, these are the really funky ones, and these are ones I see a lot in lessons. Um, the first group of three here, this is where I've got the ball way off the front of my foot. I'm leaning back, but I still managed to hit eight down because all I did, again, is simply push the handle ahead of the hands so when the club was delivered to the ball, it was still on the descent part. I hadn't caught up with the hands. It was still being pushed down because of this angle lean, hosel lean, shaft lean forwards, which was increasing the angle of attack, even with the ball forward and even with my weight back. And then you can see on the last ones here, this is where I've got the ball back in my stance. What I've done is I've hit only 1.9 down, so my second levelist hit out of all the groups of shots, and that's with the ball way back in my stance. Again, I tried to feel like I threw the handle back, let the club overtake the handle to try and get the angle of attack much more level. So you can see, with an understanding of some of the dynamics of how I'm hitting the shot, your setup, my setup in those shots, is not enough to change the angle of attack. Now, if you swing, if you imagine your hands are doing a circle, if you like, and then in turn the club is doing a circle as well, if I make a circle on the back swing with my hands, but then simply just pull my hands in closer, if the ball is, say, here, that's still on the downward part of the circle, and I'm going to be hitting on that downward part of the strike, so more on the downward part of the angle of attack. So if you are moving the two circles out of sync, changing the ball position and what have you won't work. If you are swinging your hands and your arms relatively in sync, there's always a little bit of lean forward or back, depending on the club you're hitting. Um, changing the ball position will have the desired effects, but if you're not, if you're moving the clubs where you actually do drag the handle way forward, which is very, very common, because what you'll notice from the data, if we look at it again actually, is the ones where I drag the handle the most forward, so I had the ball forwards, try and drag the hands forwards to hit down, you'll see that my club path went six across, so six to the left. So with that ball so far forwards while hitting down, my path went way to the left with the face very open to the path, which happened on, on most of the ones where I was trying to hit down. So my face was being left open to my path because my handle was forwards, not the classic theory where most people were feeling they've twisted the face open, so they've come down and twisted the face open. What I did is I came down and delivered the club this way more. So this end can't catch up with this end as soon as I lean it forwards. So you can see, if you guys want to improve your golf, now if you apply this, this is an iron where I'm hitting fall down, you can apply these rules to a driver. Driver off the front foot makes you hit up. Well, it doesn't if you're dragging the handle ahead 
of the head, you're still going to be hitting down and off and to the left with the face open to the path, which is your classic slice drive. And that's the one I see the most. So for you guys, said this a lot, the more with a club that you want to hit more upwards, so say like a driver, I know this isn't a driver, pretend it is, the more you can make your hands feel like they're pushing back, the more you can feel that you keep the hand circle, if you like, on the downswing pushing back this side of you, so creating more width is the feeling, the better chance you've got of hitting that ball on the way up. Also, the better chance you've got of getting the face to square up a bit more to the path and not be so open to the path, purely because the handle's so far forwards. Um, there's other ways you can work into this. I've seen examples of people moving their hands forwards and hitting up. It, it, it can be monitored and moved in many different ways. But the most common reoccurring one that I see day in, day out, for people who come what they call over the top, and they do the big left to right curving shots, the most common thing on a 2D screen, it looks like they're moving very much this way, but actually what they're doing is moving the handle closer to them, which will always feel like it's pushing it out. If you can think of it more on this screen rather than this down the line image and think about trying to get to the top of your backswing and then throw the club and your hands away from you, you'll find very much on a down the line view on a two dimensional camera, that will give you that kind of dropping shaft, dropping hands inside attack look that a camera gives. Um, it's not until you use good machines like this that you can actually monitor it properly. So for you guys trying to change angle of attacks to improve driver length, iron strikes by hitting more down, driver length maybe by hitting more up, simply changing the ball position and shot and body lean and these kind of positions doesn't always do enough. You've got to have an understanding between the bottom end and the top end. And the best way to get an understanding of these is to get measured on some devices like GC2 HMT and many others that can give you some proper data to see why you're hitting down. I've had so many students who have got the ball forwards, they're leaning back as they hit the ball on a 2D camera, they look like they're hitting up. Because the handle is so far forward, you can actually see when you look closely, they are still hitting down and very much to the left, given these kind of horrible left to right curving shots. So this one today, guys, not really much of a lesson as such. I'm not saying do this, do that. A little bit of advice maybe in the feeling of throwing the club away from you and it works for so many people. It's amazing how quick it can get them to, to improve angle of attack and club delivery. The main thing from today is to start understanding that it's not as simple as just changing ball positions. That can help, but if you override those positions by dragging handles or flipping club forwards, as I showed you there, I can really manipulate those numbers from any ball position. Get more of an understanding between the handle and the head You'll hit better shots, straighter shots, and I think you'll enjoy your golf a lot more. Hope that helps. Post comments down below. Does this video make sense to you or not? Is it just, you know, I haven't got a clue what I'm on about. Post comments. I love the comments. If there's any interesting ones in there, I'll always try and respond to them. Thanks for watching, and we'll speak to you all soon. So if you like what's going on here, don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel. Also, thumbs up the video. Post comments. Love to hear what you guys got to say. Let's keep it social. The more we talk, the more we share, the easier this game will get for, uh, for everybody. So if you want to find me on Facebook here, you can find me on Facebook. If you want to tweet me, find me on Twitter here as well. Just follow the links all in the description. Come and join the show. Get active, get involved, get playing some better golf. Thanks for watching.